Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Paradigm Podcast. We hope you're having a good week. It's even better than the one last and so forth. Before we get started, we want to urge you to subscribe, like the video, drop a comment down below, and follow us on all our social media platforms. All the information you need will be down in the description box below. So we always start our episode with a little disclaimer, just to kind of put out there that we here at Paradigm do not claim to have all the answers. We simply desire to be better each day. We make videos in the hope that other people that desire the same can use some of the tools we've discovered along our journey. So the information used for this discussion comes from the book Beyond Order by Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. We all really enjoy it, and I know we all recommend you go pick it up and, and let us know what you think. You know, we've really, really enjoyed the book. It's got a lot of good information in it um, that can be applied to everyday life. So go ahead and pick that up, read along with us, and let us know what your favorite part is, huh? So the chapter we're gonna be discussing this week is titled, If Old Memories Still Upset You, Write Them Down Carefully and Completely. So it's a little synopsis of the chapter. In this chapter, Dr. Peterson reflects on his clinical experience with clients dealing with traumatic past experiences. He walks through the experiences with his clients and helps them understand the morals that needed to be learned. He emphasizes the importance of learning from our past in order to understand where we are and where we wanna go. So the topic from this chapter that really stood out to us is internal communication slash learning from the past to apply for future experiences. Mm -hmm. So JBP states, frequently people do not so much repress the terrible things that happened in the past as they refuse to think them through, pushing them out of their mind or occupying themselves with other activities. Anything sufficiently threatening or harmful once encountered can never be forgotten if it has never been understood. Learn from the past or repeat its horrors in imagination endlessly. So the first question we're going to discuss is why does this topic have substantial meaning to you? And how do you think people can benefit from past uh, from reflection of past experiences? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'll, I'll start. Go, John. There's two quotes I think really step stick out. Why reviewing the past is good. First one here is 232. Just real quick, it goes, We must rekindle every lost opportunity. We must re repent for missing the mark. Meditate on our errors. Acquire now what we should have acquired then and put ourselves back together. So I take that as in, you, if you made a mistake, you can look back and be like, okay, next time I won't do that again. Mm -hmm. The second thing was, and this is, I would say, more like poetic, poetic but um, similar. It's like, but we are also, more precisely and accurately, charters of courses, sailors and explorers. We recall the places we started from, the positions we occupied when our stories began. We remember the pitfalls and the successes of the past so that we can avoid the former and repent the later. Um, so we're mapping out life. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. But every time you do something new, you can go, oh, okay didn't work then, won't do that again. Or this did work, I'll make sure to do that more often. And if you keep doing that, just better life experience, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's very well said. Um, I think in simple terms, just like more of like, um, I think everybody reflects on their past to a certain degree. Um, maybe you do it unconsciously. Um, but I think everybody does it to a certain extent because if we keep, if we do the same thing over and over again, we're never learning from if it's a mistake or if it's a good thing. If we want the good thing to keep happening, we don't know how it's happening. It just happens. Um, and I think it's good to have like somewhat of a strategy or some way of like, okay, I did that and that's working. I'm going to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. But if you're uh, aimlessly kind of just like hitting the mark um, and you're hitting it every time, like it's good. Like I think it's, it leans both ways. Good, th bad things can happen to you and good things can happen to you. But if you don't know how they're happening, um, there is room for failure there. You're setting yourself up to fail in the long run, but I think it's always good to reflect on where you come from, where you're at, um, what goals you're setting up, why you want your goals. Why is that your goal? Um, it just gives you a concrete idea, a strong foundation for who you are and the character you're building for yourself. Mm, um, obviously if, yeah. you, if you want to take it another level and tell people who you want to be and who you're becoming, that's totally on you. But like, I think it's good and, and nurturing just to have the solidity to solidify for yourself. Like, yeah. make that a hard like stance on that oh shit that was like <laughs> <laughs> no i like that again that was yeah good. so it's like um put the flag in the ground <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> what about you jay oh myself um so why does this topic have substantial meaning to you 
Um, so for myself, I remember being maybe like a couple years ago coming across Ray Dalio's principles. And mm -hmm. I think we've talked about it so much on this uh, podcast, yeah. but mm -hmm. he talks about there's a five step course um, to becoming successful or how, what successful people do. And so they, they think for what themselves, they decide for what themselves, what's true, right? They decide for themselves what's true. And then they chart a course to go and then they, they go, they stumble, they hit a rock, they fall, they process, and then they make the change and evolve, mm -hmm. right? And I think that process stage is a lot of, um, you know, you said a lot of people reflect in their own way. I think some people just don't. Like there's yeah. a person, he talks about in this chapter, a guy coming into his, um, his clinical practice and he just compartmentalizes things and puts it in his brain where he doesn't have to think about it anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important to process information because in your evolved stage, if you didn't process it, what are you really evolving to? You're not getting any better. You just got back on the same course to run into another rock or wall. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really substantial to me because of how important and kind of how much of an emphasis he puts on the processing stage. Yeah. Because if you take that time to process you learn from your past successes or failures you can really chart out a better course moving forward uh, so how do i think people can benefit from the past experiences there's always a lesson to be learned in a in a life experience no matter what it is uh, so it is extremely important to take that time to do the processing stage and uh and learn and, and evolve so I think that's why it's super beneficial. You just made me think about, I think there's this quote, it's like a wise man learns from history and a fool learns from experience. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of zoom out too, it's like there's a bunch of books about thousands of years of human history. The Bible's a good example. Yeah. It's like those are also people's experiences. Mm -hmm. And if you're wise enough, you could gain information from other people's experiences, not just your own. Right. Yeah. And he talks about that in this chapter, too. He says, um, you know, we, we have all these fundamental books and, and fundamental knowledge in our culture at the base of our culture that we all hold in high esteem. Some of us, you know, we all have some of our foundational fundamentalist uh, knowledge that we reflect on. But we can think of them, even the Bible, whatever type of book you look at as foundational, as stories telling us about human behavior throughout the past. Mm -hmm. And the, like you said, the wise person learns from that. But there's also some of us that look at that and are like, okay, I think I can do it better. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And have to experience it. Like, we've all done it. For myself, it was like, oh, you know, don't have a girlfriend going into college because it's like bringing sand to the beach. Yeah. I have to figure that out for myself. Yeah. Right? So some people have to go through the experience of it. Yeah. Right? But, um, yeah, we use these as fundamental knowledge. Could have been building sand castles out there. But Jerry oh, brought dude. sand. Yeah, There's dude. a bunch of sand I brought my there. own grain of sand, you know? Yeah, one grain. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, how about you, David? Yeah, Why does this topic have substantial meaning to you? And how do you think people can benefit from reflection of past experiences? <clears throat> um, it's sort of kind of repetitive of what you guys already said. I think there's just so much you can learn from the past once you make sense of it and once you can like access that past trauma and take inventory of what actually what happened um, because you can learn from it or if you don't you're you're kind of doomed to repeat that past and those horrors still haunt you through imagination or sometimes it just it feels real in the moment that you're reliving those experiences mm -hmm. i like this uh quote kind of explains um in a better way of what i was trying to say it, it there's a quote on the in the thing in the middle of page 231 says, um, it is a psychological truism that anything sufficient, sufficiently threatening or harmful once encountered can never be forgotten if it has never been understood. Yeah. So I took that as if something is bothering you from your past and you never took the time to understand it, it's probably being relived a lot of your thoughts or it's existing there and it's, it's, a, it's a big thing in your life. But once you make sense of it, once you can take the time to really understand it, Maybe you won't ever forget it, but it'll be easier to cope with and you can learn to live with it. And it almost doesn't have as much negative weight as it once did once you do take the time to understand it. And I think that's a benefit. I don't know if anybody wants to not learn. That That's kind of weird or backwards to me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, yeah, I see it the same way. It's like backwards. Like if, if you reflect on your past and you're like, ah, I don't care. Like I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing and figure it out. Like it's like you're not like 
you just don't want to you want to keep making the same mistake like mm. you don't want to refl- like it, it wouldn't it just doesn't make sense to yeah. me like people that are like if someone said oh no i don't want to do that <laughs> i think it's scary to people to, re- to confront it oh yeah mm-hmm. especially if it's like really traumatic like yeah i think i think a big thing is too and um i just want to say this because we keep talking about the past a lot mm-hmm. and that for me a big thing was just clear communication with your past present and future because if like if you're focusing too much on the past, you can't be present. What's what's going on right now? You know, right? Um, it's good to like acknowledge the past. <clears throat> so we talked about it. you don't repeat the same pitfalls, but um, it's very important to be in the present and really being tr- trying to talk to your, your future self. So you're doing the things in the present that can help you for the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a three way talk with with three of yourselves. You know. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. I've also heard like a way like people some people think about like um, thinking delusionally like um, even if you come to, from like a really rough background, um, kind of like thinking of money like just think put yourself in the shoes of like you're already a millionaire like you, in your mind like if you looked at your bank account right now it would say like six zeros and not like twenty bucks you know what I mean it's almost like you can be mm-hmm. a delusional to a certain extent I know like a lot of people talk about that way of like being present and not focusing so focusing so much on the on the past because it happened we can't change the past we can change right now and we definitely have control somewhat more control over the future yeah. um where we position ourselves now so, equals tomorrow baby yeah. oh yeah definitely. Sure. yeah on the next page it kind of goes off of what david said uh, jbp states we must recollect our experiences and derive from them their moral otherwise we remain in the past plagued by reminiscences tormented by conscience cynical for the loss of what might have been unforgiving of ourselves and unable to accept the challenge and tragedies facing us. We must recollect ourselves or suffer in direct proportion to our ignorance and avoidance. So I I really liked that quote because... That shit already happened. It happened and it's in the back of your head and you know it's there, you know? And if you don't take the time to understand it, it's just going to either happen again or you're going to make that same mistake again and and you're tormented by that and you don't know why right the process of that it just seems dark and I, I think that's a good like kind of window into what can happen if somebody just kind of lives in that traumatic experience or just completely compartmentalizes it and put it in the back of their yeah. brain yeah they so, know about it but nobody else does yeah definitely so the next question is how would you guys recommend starting uh excuse me how would you recommend someone start reflecting on past experiences and why is it important um I know for like say me and you Jay like um, journaling is a big thing like mm-hmm. um, that's a great start but I know like John like takes a totally different approach so like for me for one I think journaling and not just journaling but um, I'm thinking I'm finding different ways to journal um, like mm-hmm. I was listening to a podcast today and uh, just finding more effective ways to get your thoughts out of your brain so you have more brain capacity to like add more stuff. Mm. Um, that's one thing that's helped with me, especially if like a, a traumatic experience or like um, a money pitfall or like a, a, a vicious breakup or a, a friend fallout, anything. Um, it's good to just journal, write it down how you genuinely feel. No one has to read it. Like you can tell yourself how you really feel. And then if you want to reflect on that and like how you guys got to that point, how you put yourself in this position, then you can understand your, at least understand yourself better. Um, so journaling being like a big proponent to tackling, um, reflection, tackling, um, who you want to become, um, where you come from, how you're going to set set yourself up to become that person that you want to be. Um, I think just writing in general. How about if I, if I asked you, what would be step one? If someone was going to like, all right, I want to take the time to figure this out. You say you journal a lot, but you kind of covered a lot of things right now. So maybe what would be like step one? Well, find, find what you want to like reflect on. Find something that you, you find passionate enough to reflect or something that's bothering you if you if it needs reflection. Um, and then start there. Um, if and you just start writing. Yeah, like you don't even have to start writing, but find something that's bothering you in life. Find something that's like, oh, this is like, I have this in my back of my mind, but I don't know what to uh, Don't forget writing, forget doing anything, forget taking action right now. Just give your second to think about like why why is this bothering you? What is bothering you? How long ago was it? How long have you been living with this? Right. And then like kind of build yeah, up a like, brainstorm and it, then you can start writing and start like, okay, I got to buy it. Give it, so, give it some, um, some image. Yeah. Like a substance. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a part in the book where this guy comes in who's been bullied and, um, bullied to the extent where he's like really been secluded and become an outcast. 
uh, you know, he ha he's in a world of his own, he's, he says in the book. But one of the biggest things he does when he does counseling with him is that he has him write down the past experiences and then speak it out loud. And if things were not detailed enough, he would m tell that person, hey, this is too vague. I need you to go into more depth. And by doing that, he's really getting to break down, okay, what could I have done differently? Where was the line for me? And next time moving forward, what would I do different? I think, yeah, because the chapter I mean, literally says, if old memories still upset you, write them down carefully and completely. Literally. And I right. think literally like, what I get is you make a memory and you kind of make like a script of it, like an accurate accounting of like what happened. Like it's a play and there's parts. Mm -hmm. And like you can kind of maybe take a little bit of your emotion out of being as like the, like, like the, the protagonist, like the player, and you just take all the pieces and you go, oh, you get to take like a little bit just view from, from like over top, you know? Mm -hmm. right. And I think when it's like that, maybe you can potentially see a lens without your emotion on it. Yeah. Because when you, if things bother you, you can't help but like, you're like reliving the emotion more than the memory. It's intense. You know? Because yeah. um, he brings up that example of the young woman and she, her account of a story is for, like the version of when she was four years old, even though she's like 32. And he right. makes her do like a similar thing and makes her look at it now. He's like, okay, now I want you to look at it as 30, 32 year old Karen, not a four year old. And it, it helped yeah. her kind of just shift the, the angle of the memory and she was able to accept it now as a 32 year old because she's like, I'm no longer a four year old. I, I can kind of look at it a different way and it didn't take anything away from what happened to her, but it, she was able to look at it and find more acceptance with herself, you know? And yeah. that was kind of like the whole point for her story. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a different paradigm to look through the same problem. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's different because he talks about that woman speaking as if she was that four-year-old. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so she was, she, when she recounts that moment, she's in the moment. Yeah. She right. never takes the time to be out of the moment and look at it from a different paradigm and be like, oh, that person was only two years older than me. They can't be held accountable if, as if I think about a six-year-old now. Yes. Right? I mean, the, it just seems like your parents were lacking in supervision at that point. Yeah. So to answer your question, I would say just try to have an accurate account of the thing that is bothering you. Mm -hmm. And try to leave emotion out of it. Like if you're writing like a manuscript or like a manual, you know, like a... That's a good way to put it. You know, and that way you can, if you just read it, reading it like it's a play, you know, there's like yeah, parts. It's like, okay, oh, yeah. like you're reading it as if you're an actor and you're like, okay, when does the emotion come in? And you're taking account of like when that kicks in for you. But otherwise you're just reading this like as a script. As a script. And then, That's you, dope. yeah. All right, what's next, Jack? Um, <laughs> did you guys want to mention anything on that? How um, would you I don't know. I feel like we killed that one. That's okay. a pretty yeah. specific answer. And we yeah. don't want to dilute yeah. that too much. I think for okay. anybody watching do that yeah even the, the <laughs> chapter title is kind of like a great depiction of like, write it down yeah write it literally write it down go read right. some books and i, I, I want to say i'm i don't normally do that but in the few times that i have it has brought more clarity to like the thing i'm thinking about so yeah. i'm just not a good practicer of that you know yeah, yeah. i think that's yeah, a good way a to look at it though too like how you put it like you can write it as like a script and not just a personal experience like i felt like this because this happened and like write it like Third like person. a manual like yeah take yourself out of your body and then like write something without emotion obviously it's gonna be really fucking difficult yeah. but try it i think yeah. that's a different way to look at it Got like it. look yeah. at journaling definitely so what would you guys tell someone who believes reflecting on the past is too hard or unnecessary Ooh. Um, I mean, that's just like not a mature person. So. Yeah, it's, either, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really immature. <laughs> and like, I, I agree with John. Like, I think it's really immature. And also, you're setting yourself up to lose hope for the future. Um, you look sure. at, you're going to start looking at everything as if like um, a lose lose um, uh, because you're just, you hold on to the past. You hold on to everything. And if you're not holding on, you're not doing any real reflection. You're not doing any like learning um, because you think it's like dumb or it's like kind of pointless. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, brief is it's immature um it's I, negligent i would say someone who doesn't want to do that is sort of lacking responsibility within themselves yes. yeah. and, and and they're they just lack lack their responsibility they're afraid of it they don't want to they don't want to do it do, do mm. the consequences yeah 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 i think the for the person that thinks it's too hard um 
I I think it's important to note that anything worth doing is going to be hard. It's hard. Yeah. Right. It's going to be hard. <clears throat> and through doing hard things, we create better character. Yeah. And so if, if you're the person out there that thinks it's too hard, we all have been at some point in our lives. Um, just baby steps, right? Get the mm-hmm. journal. Just go buy the notebook, right? And then get a pen out. Or a piece Open of paper. the paper and just write something. Get yourself some dope pens, felt pens, glitter get pens. Get something, you know what I mean? And just do baby steps um, because with like with anything hard that you do, you just have to kind of chunk it out. You just If you want to eat an elephant, you got to eat it one bite at a time. Well, you don't even have to do all that. I mean, you can just have some inner dialogue. Like, I, I don't journal, but I mean, I like have an inner dialogue in my head, yeah. like going over stuff. Like all the time when I talk to you guys, I'm always like, ah, that shit pissed me off i did that today mm-hmm. i'm yeah. mad that i did that I think, or, or i feel guilty that i did that you i know? think also two people oh, visually need to see what their inner dialogue looks on fucking paper so that way they can see maybe how they're True. don't agree with you know because the inner dialogue i think is where people get tripped up is because they're trying to do all this in their head but then when they see it they're like okay now i can put it together because i could see it in front of me True. Yeah. True. you know so on the inner dialogue uh thing like point how do you start that conversation with yourself i think it's usually something that's bothering you yeah so how does it usually go i think i'm a pretty hard critic of myself inside and normally when i am alone like things just bubble to the top that i did that i'm like embarrassed about or guilty about or like Mm -hmm. maybe i got too drunk and i'm like i'm so fucking stupid um so that stuff just comes up naturally i think that's why i'm a big like supporter of like clocking in no phone for an hour or two and just being with your thoughts because those things just tend to rise to the surface naturally if you just give them a moment but we're all the time like consuming something whether it's twitter the phone the tv you come home you gotta stream you you gotta go to your phone like you never just like with your thoughts but if you just let them kind of bubble i think it happens naturally yeah and then like the things i bubble up i'm like yeah i i know i I know you know i I hear you loud and clear it's two johns talking to each other i I, well i'll try not to embarrass myself again at each other what's that um with the the devil and the angel on your shoulder is that called anything or is it just called that's that's exactly what it's it's called yeah Yeah. i i was gonna say too um that that inner dialogue or the no phones no outside stuff distracting you is is totally like a game changer for me especially like we went on a hike yesterday and i was just going ham going up the mountain and I was alone with my thoughts. And I think that's why I like hiking and outdoorsy and backpacking stuff yeah. so mm-hmm. much lately. Is because it's been like, what am I thinking about on top of this mountain with no service or anything? And, you know, we're all just in the zone. What's in my head? Yeah, I've been telling you guys, you got to start running no headphones. It's just you, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I think that shit that's me. another time where I clock in like, like time with myself, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Again, when I run without headphones, I, I, my mind goes to like what are people doing outside right now? Like when I see people walking, I start like people watching I'm like, what is this person? Where are they going? Why are they yeah. wearing that? Like, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts. It's not yeah. just me like, like fucking having therapy, but <laughs> things happen. I'm like, Oh shit. Or sometimes I just have a good idea, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. all, I think that's like therapeutic in itself. You, you just giving yourself, for me, the whole chapter is about having communication with yourself, you know? And I feel like whether it's the past or your present or future, especially today, People don't make time for themselves. You know, no. it, it's like crazy. Like we, we spend eight hours at work, someone else's time. You know, we get 30 minutes at lunch and people scarf down food and look at Twitter or they, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then they come home and if they don't go to the gym, they're fucking right on the Netflix, right on the laptop, right on the phone. And like they do that and pretty much until they close their eyes. Mm-hmm. And it's like, there wasn't like even five minutes for yourself. <laughs> like even when you go take a shit, you're like, "Where's my phone at? I can't go take a shit on my phone." Literally, it's like the prime so, time to be on your phone. So that's my fave. I, I imagine <laughs> if you clocked in just one hour for yourself, two. You know, yeah. I want to mention too. It, I think this book is so, or especially this rule is so important because I know so many people that identify with their trauma. Like that's their whole personality. Yeah, that's true. Trauma, 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 trauma. You hear that thrown around all the time. Everybody's got trauma. Yeah, I know. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? And, always me and they, so. their whole identity is based around that. So right. how long are you going to identify with something that either was in the past or just you're presently not taking the, the accountability to figure it out yourself? Yeah. Or this, even like, not even I, like I, I um, this what is, is that? that? I'm a victim. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. My name is victim. Not yeah, even a, like an identity, but like, a, like, have you ever heard anybody say like, oh, I don't eat much or I don't eat p- pineapple on pizza and I'll, pizza and I'll never try it. Like you've never, like you, you will never give it a shot. Like 
it's not an identity, but it's like... You're talking you, about like in terms of trying new things? Yeah, trying new things. Like they solidified that and it won't ever... It's like, why? Mm. Why? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Change that a little bit. And I know it's a lot smaller like than nobody, being like a, like a fucking traumatic experience, but mm. I, I think things can trickle down to as small as like liking pineapple on a pizza. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's... I think it boils down to is something as simple as like... Think about the person that lives their whole life as a victim and then think of somebody who lives their whole life as a survivor. And which one do you want to be? Hmm. Right? I want to be a winner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to survive. Exactly. So, um, final question. Are there any resources you would provide to someone who wants to learn about inner dialogue or reflecting on past experiences? So, the, the reason cool. I ask this question is because there's, uh, you know, a bunch of different practice, like uh, clients he mentions in this chapter. Mm-hmm. He talks about this one person who believes that all he, adults are, he firmly believes and was taught as a kid, all adults are angels. They're God's angels. They're, they're not capable of bad. And so he, in order to kind of break that paradigm that this person had, because it's not true and it leads to problems later on in life or currently, he provides books, right? Um, the Way of the Ordinary Men. He talks about The Rape of Nanking. He, all these books he provides to this person to kind of give him a new outlook or see a new thing that kind of breaks that paradigm. So are there any resources you guys would provide? Mm-hmm. Somebody comes to you. I just, I, like, I'm going to reference a book, but I just yeah. listened to this podcast and it literally is along the lines of journaling. And that's kind of like, I'm trying to like fix uh, or make a more productive way to journal and be, be more effective. Um, there's an, this uh, author called, uh, his name's Tyogo, Ty, Tyogo, I don't even know how to say his first name, uh, Forte, but it is his book that just came out called Building a Second Brain. Um, one thing that I deal with a lot is having too much in my space of like thinking and there's two it's cluttered and so when journaling for instance is like it removes everything for the 24 hours that i've been thinking or the 18 hours i've been awake it gives me a release um and he this book specifically talks about being becoming a more productive writer being more productive and where you want to go and how you get there and writing and journaling Mm -hmm. um so obviously it's just another reference like jay said like it's another book um if you're not a reader um, I really don't like. Another. There's audio books. Yeah, there's yeah. audio books. Um, so if you don't like yeah. reading, um, but other outside of that, like, I know journal, writing shit down is like number one for me. Mm-hmm. Um, if I think of something else, I'll resource. Try and, like, pen can you paper. reiterate the title and author? Uh, it's gonna be the title is uh, Building a Second Brain, um, and his first name is Ty. I still need my first one. Tyogo Forte. Tyogo for- Forte. Yeah, um, yeah, and it just that. it just came out, so like, that's why I'm like I'm nice. excited to get that book. Like, yeah. nice. Maybe we can read nice. it sometime. Yeah, yeah. It's I think it's more of like um, like how you put it like a a product a productivity book. Oh, okay. It's not something yeah. like JBP. Or like um, okay. I would say a resource is um this one might be a little bit more work on your end, but just finding good people to outsource the way you're thinking to who are responsible people oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. and yeah. who are disciplined. Um, cause those people can probably be like the catalyst to helping you figure out something from the past um what you know and then oh, you got the luxury like we've talked about you know therapy is sort of a luxury to be able to go somewhere and i and get therapy you know like the way we before we met john put it into perspective for me the, a lot of people don't have the privilege or not privilege um the luxury to go to therapy right mm-hmm. so these are other things that are resources either within you or that you could probably do immediately within your circle yeah John, do you have something you wanted to say? What was that book that said um, to think you almost need two people like you and yourself again? Seven Habits. Seven Habits? Yeah. And it says, so that's why it's easier a lot of times to have a conversation with somebody. That way you, can, you only have to be one person. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times I call my dad and I just like talk for 20 minutes because I have like a lot of stuff in my head. And just saying out, saying out loud everything, I kind of get like a straight line of like the whole vision I had. Because like I'm saying these ideas and he's also inputting stuff and making like a better a better like landscape of what my thoughts are and i'm able to like say everything and i'm like oh okay okay now i now i know what i'm talking about and then like he didn't really even fucking answer anything i just needed to to, like talk with someone that could like verbally like like volley back and forth with me enough for me to get my thoughts out and i'm like okay i'm thanks i'm good and i'll like hang up you know that's i think me and david did this last night sort of along that lines like because i was taught i talked to claire about some stuff about like getting a relationship being a relationship and then i told david like he's like dude you should have like we should have talked about it first because it could you could come off sounding like you're being you're disregarding where she's putting herself um and i was like damn like and 
I was like, that gave me so much clarity. I, like, I should have like mentioned this be to you before ever speaking to her. Mm-hmm. And so it just like that, like I vomited, and then it was like <laughs> almost a straight line was through that vomit. And it was like, damn, that was like great insight. Mm-hmm. And I feel like mm-hmm. it's it's great to have someone like three guys, four guys, four girls, whatever it is, like one person to like hear all everything, fucking vomit on them. And just get a perspective. They don't have to answer anything, but they just get your thoughts out to somebody and see what they right. think of it. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. that's a fucking that's a great source. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for myself, I think authors do a big disservice when they don't. So as a, as a scientist, we always write a references page, or you guys remember doing a bibliography, or oh, some yeah. sort of references cited sucks. page. <laughs> I always think authors do a real big disservice. By not putting at the end of their book the references that got them to where they are now. Oh, uh, true. So, if like if I were to ever write a book at the end, it'd have you know JBP, it'd have all the books we've read. I'd put it at the end and be like, these are the resources that I got my information from. You go check them out and figure it out for yourself. So I, I always think it's important to provide resources and references for people. Mm. Um, so for myself, I think a really big one that talks about inner dialogue and it's a short, sweet book is As a Man Thinketh. <laughs> right yeah how you it's talk in your brain changes how you act in the world yeah, that's right that's the one of the big topics of that book if not the topic of the book so self-talk is huge so if i were to recommend something to somebody about inner dialogue i would say go pick up as a man thinketh and i mean you could probably read it in like 30 like, minutes yeah, dude I, yeah. i've literally crushed that book yeah for sure like an hour like in yeah. one sitting i'm like wow that was great you put it yeah, down right. you read a whole book yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. like if you've never read that's a book to read yeah like, that's you could start. be done with it and in i mean minutes. yeah true and they have it on audiobook i'm pretty sure the first time i ever listen to it was on spotify you can look it up and yeah. the whole thing's there and then i read it because i was like that was pretty good and then reading it was even more fire yeah i treat that as a, um i wonder if audible has a, a feature where you can see how many times you read a book i've used that like as a bible <laughs> mm-hmm. like, anytime yeah, yeah. i feel like life is it or shitty or like i feel like oh this sucks or whatever like i just remember like or if my thoughts are going fucking haywire like i just play that book and he and didn't re- like, reinvent the wheel when he made that you know yeah, no, he, he, absolutely he, he like just condensed I think he even says he just condensed stuff that was already out there, yeah. right. like in like the most mm-hmm. like simplest form. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn, I wish he provided the resources. Authors, provide resources <laughs> yeah, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. end of your books, yeah, please, because that's what I want to know. Throughout the book, that. it's like, yeah, ch- these are the books I checked out. But at the end, put it title, give me the information, because I want to know what you know. You know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that really covers what we got today. Is there any other key takeaways you guys want to mention? Okay, for me, a big thing is because we focused highly on the past i think it's important to touch on the future part yeah. and in this book it ends it with like having a clear vision and he references genesis if you guys don't know it's the first part of the bible and it's about how god made stuff and they make a point to, to make how so it goes something like this it's like god said let there be light and then there was light because god said so and they made an emphasis and they repeat stuff like that like 10 times mm. and them making the point to be like he said this and then it happened because he said this to me is like a story of man where like you can't accomplish something until you acknowledge it and you were like hey i'm going to try to do this you know i'm going to try to do this and then if you set a reasonable goal you have reasonable expectations and you put the work to get there once you accomplish it i mean who's to say you didn't accomplish it because you said so you know you're like I said I was going to do this. I did it because I said so, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I think there's a lot of power in that. But if you don't, you can't acknowledge what's like some people are unrealistic, you know, I'm like, okay, okay. I, I'm happy that you have big ideas because if you, that's great. You should have big ideas, yeah. but let's start with like the step one before step a hundred. Mm-hmm. And then once you, you can like compound that, but the whole thing is you got to see it and then work towards it. And then you can be like, I did that because I said so, you know? And there's like a lot of power behind that. So that's for me, it's like, you gotta be able to talk to your past so you can learn, so you can live in the present. So in the future, you've grown, you know? So that's the whole thing. It's like yeah. being in the present, like I'm gonna do this, that way in the future, you're like, I did it, you know? Yeah, and I, I, I think I, uh, I personally experienced that with uh, trading when I was vlogging or like taking account and showing Instagram, like my whole like journey, like yeah. instead of saying, when I get, or like, if I get the challenge or if I get the hundred K account, like if, if this, if that, it's almost like, I don't believe that I'm going to get it. Yeah. I like, instead I was like, when I get the account, when I hit the live account, when I do this, it's like, he did it, but there's no for sure thing, but it sounds like he's for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 
I got it. But after you accomplish it, like, it, it was for sure. Yeah, and it yeah. was for sure. And it's like I think it's the like what you said earlier, Jay. It's like the, as a man thinketh. One thing that I took from that book was what Jay said. Like the way you talk in your mind and the way you see yourself, and even if it's a little word like if, mm-hmm. if is it could be on or off. It gives you an out. It, it gives you an out. If you use words like that a lot in your vocabulary, it almost sets yourself up to be like you you lack Wishy-washy. confidence. Yeah. yeah, and. It makes you think you can't fail. And so I think if you can remove words like could or uh, if, um, if um, possibly, uh, possibly like the words that are like that on and off, like mm. just give yourself an on and just stay on. Yeah. Don't don't go back and forth with it. Stay hard. Yes. Stay <laughs> stay hard. Hard. And, and you'll, see, you'll see how far you go because yeah. you're so confident in yourself. And I think now I'm thinking about the book The Man Think of is about – you in the present and you in the future. It's nothing about the past. past it's all yeah. about like, hey, if you want that shit, you better stop having your mind in the gutter. You know, mm-hmm. like, and yeah. simple terms. One thing, uh, like, if you believe in a law, the law of attraction, then I think you almost believe in God. True. Continue. Yeah, I think what John was saying is like, um, God said, like, um, the whole Genesis yeah. statement. It's like this new era of law of attraction. I think that's a big thing with like the universe now in our generation. It's like. I don't know how many people believe in God or going to church and like that believe in the law of attraction or use the universe as their God. But it's almost like if that is an ancient scripture and you believe in the law of attraction, it's almost like you believe in some God mm. to a certain extent if your consciousness of if you're conscious of it or not. Yeah, yeah. You know I would I mean? say they're like they could be like agnostic or something. Yeah. So yeah. Definitely. Just thought that was a cool pickup. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another installment of Paradigm Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show and learned a thing or two. Uh, So we're going to reiterate the disclaimer. Again, we here at Paradigm do not claim to have all the answers. We simply desire to be better each day. We make videos in the hope that other people that desire the same can use some of the tools we've learned, uh, discovered along our journey. So before you take off, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, drop a comment down below. What was your favorite part of this chapter? We want to hear it. What is something you think maybe we overlooked? So we can go ahead and look back on that. And uh, are there any books you would recommend for a future series? Obviously. And then uh, what did you learn from Rule 9? So make sure to follow us on our social media platforms. All the information will be down in the description box below. And remember, the life you live now creates who you'll be tomorrow. Peace. Peace out.